Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel. You've got Bert, the Hurt Man Locker over here. Yeah, you got Lanny over here. I'm still working on that nickname here. We'll Lanny get to Manny? Lanny. I don't know. <laughs> I love it. We are excited to bring you another YouTube channel and bring some more financial education your way today. You know the drill, everybody. Smash that subscribe button. Turn that thumb up below so you can like this video. We're here to teach you some more financial education, how you can save money and save taxes, as well as potentially to invest this money as well. It's a perfect trifecta, you betcha, coming your way. Yeah, a couple weeks ago we talked to you about the 401k, we talked to you about your traditional IRA accounts and how those can save. We are about to tell you another vehicle that can be used to help you save on taxes, increase your and increase your dividend income at the same time. In summary, sneak peek here's an investment vehicle or a you know asset product that could be tax-free going in and could be tax-free coming out so we can't wait to teach you the tricks of the trade to help you on your journey to financial freedom why are we focused so much on tax savings that's a it's a great question and the reason is pretty simple we do everything in our power to maximize every cent possible. And we take every cent and try to invest it and grow our passive income. And here's a pretty simple question. Why would you want to pay more taxes than you have to? I know I don't. I'm hearing nothing. I don't hear anything. Mm -hmm. Wait, is there somebody in the back out there that wants to pay more in taxes? Oh, no, they came into the wrong room. Yeah, yeah, get out. Yeah, no, no, no. Go to a different seminar here. I'm kidding. Nobody wants to pay more than they have to. And the tax code has plenty of ways for individual investors to reduce their tax bill in a legally manner. And that's what we're here to teach you about. Now, this has to deal with your health care, your health insurance, um, and the place where you work. Now, this is a method and a, and a tax efficient vehicle where you essentially save money and taxes for what you put in as well as potentially could pay no taxes when you take it out. And that's the key here. That's what makes this vehicle unique compared to so many others, the, ta the no taxes in and the no taxes out. So here's the million dollar question is, what is this magical tax account that we are talking about? We love our three letters. I think the IRS loves the three letters. When you think of 401 IRA, well, this is no different and it's the HSA that health savings account. I know some consultants love keeping things simple. The government loves their acronyms. The HSA is no different. So what is a health savings account? Well, it's just that. It's a savings account that is you know, there for your health expenses. And we're talking prescriptions, medical visits. The IRS has a website that shows you what your health savings account can be used for. Now do not get this confused with a flexible spending account. That is completely different because what you put in you have to use before the end of the year. A health savings account is something that you can keep and keep having year after year after year and you don't ever have to, it's not a use it or lose it policy. And that's, that is huge because you can then, as we will tell you in a little bit, you can take this and we'll explain what happens to those extra dollars a little bit later on in the video. One of the things I think is important with the health savings account is you have to have on your health insurance plan a high deductible account to use a health savings account. That is the one caveat. So if your employer offers a high deductible health insurance plan, you can contribute to your health savings account and grow the account balance that way. So yeah, so you qualify to have a health savings account if you have a high deductible health insurance plan. At my place of employer, usually, again, and I'll use mine as an example, I have an option. I have a low deductible plan or a high deductible plan option. I chose the high deductible plan option so I can have the HSA. And funny for me, we actually chose the opposite. I'm on my wife's health insurance plan and through her employer, they offer a very, very slim down high deductible plan to where it's just not, it's cost prohibitive for me to select that and contribute to an HSA. So we are on a 
low deductible plan, so I cannot contribute. So you definitely have to perform your research to see, okay, the costs and benefits, as well as the options that you have, again, through your employer. So given the example of a high deductible plan, you're then allowed to have a health savings account. Now, most employers will have another company that's already set up so that you can contribute into that health savings account as part of your high deductible plan. Now the caveat is, is for the employers, their health costs are lower. Mm -hmm. And for you, your monthly health insurance premium is also lower because again, you're paying a higher deductible for when you have an, uh, an item come up. Yeah, so you can then contribute to this health savings account to help you cover the cost that would come up when it does arise with that higher deductible. Now, the best part is, is here, you can, you can contribute up to, in 2020, $3,550 for a single person or $7,100 for a family. In 2021, I believe that goes up to $3,600 and $7,200 for a family. Yeah, so you get a nice little bump on that too. And that's a huge amount that you can contribute because it can unlock some major tax savings for you as well. And that's exactly what we're here to talk about. You want to save money and keep your dollars. And that's what Bert and I are about to show you with this health savings account. So with your HSA, if you contribute up to $3,550 for 2020 or $3,600 for 2021, Again, talking about, we'll use the example for single individuals. The tax savings are amazing. Because I'll tell you what, it's not just federal taxes that you save. It's federal, your state taxes, and that beloved FICA tax, aka the Social Security and Medicare. Yeah, if you open up your paycheck and see all those taxes that get taken out on the front end, those get eliminated when you contribute to your pre-tax HSA account as well. You are Those dollars get taken out before the taxes are applied, which is exactly how you unlock these massive savings. So if you did the high deductible plan and contributed to this health savings account as an individual, given you're in a 22% tax bracket, Bert, can you go over some of those savings, those tax savings metrics, maybe one by one, maybe start with federal and move into state and then FICA? Yeah, so if you maximize the, in 2020 the 3,550, let's assume a 22% tax rate for your federal, just as a nice little average for the group, you can save $781 in taxes. If you assume a 3% state tax rate, because they're all different for these states, the 3% gives you tax savings of $106.50. And then lastly, that 7.65% FICA, you can save 271-ish dollars as well, bringing your total tax savings to $1,159. That's huge. Huge. We're talking almost $100 a month in tax savings. That's an extra $1,200 that you can also put right back into the market. And this is another way to reduce your taxable income or your adjusted gross income to allow you again to contribute to other tax efficient vehicles. Yeah, and in 2021, assuming the same percentages that we just applied, if you maximize the 3,600, you'd say 792 on your federal taxes, 108 on your state, and about 275 on the FICA taxes, which brings you a slightly higher tax savings of $1,175. Now, that's perfect. So again, it's tax-free going in. Now, the IRS has rules and guidelines, and again, we'll put them in references below in the description, but we mentioned it could also be tax-free coming out. So there are ways where it's tax-free coming out. So say, for instance, I went to have a, you know, something performed. You know, I had a, a $500 expense at the doctor. If I just save that receipt, at some future point in time, I can always take money out and reimburse myself. And again, I don't have to pay taxes when I reimburse myself. Yeah, because that's your money to spend on medical expenses. And that's the point of this account, to cover these unexpected things that may happen. Now, Bert, there's the other fun IRS item that can make it tax-free coming out. Again, it's so hard to find something that's tax-free going in and tax-free coming out. What other thing is there that allows it to be tax-free coming out? Well, so we've talked about how your HSA, you, can, you don't have to use these contributions during the year. So what happens to all this money that's just growing 
and growing, what's happening to it? If you don't use your expenses, then what? Well, once you reach the retirement age of 65, this HSA turns into a retirement account. How cool is that? You can start taking penalty-free withdrawals from your HSA once you reach that age of 65. And again, a, a fun part about the HSA is most places also have an investment part mm -hmm. for the HSA. I know where you and I both used to work together, you can actually invest it into a mutual fund or an ETF. And say when you leave that place of your employer, you can actually roll it over. And that's exactly what Bert and I did. We each rolled our separate plans once we left our previous employer into a lively HSA account, which we'll put it down in the description below. And I know mine's invest fully into the market right now. Yeah, same here. I have a few hundred dollars I keep in cash for those medical expenses that may happen, but I invest a lot of it in some nice ETFs that will just watch my money grow over time as well. Yeah, I keep it fairly safe and easy and boring with my HSA money from the investment standpoint but they're in low cost ETFs, paying me quarterly dividends tax free right now. Yeah, and I think that's an important point. You can load this account and then that's how you start increasing your income there. You're taking this money that you're saving for future medical expenses that may happen, you're investing it along the way, you're increasing your dividend income along the way, and you're increasing this pot that can be used for a retirement account once you hit that age of 65. So in summary, a health savings account is the trifecta, you betcha, tax efficient vehicle. It's tax free going in from federal, state, and FICA, and then based on qualified medical expenses, it's tax free coming out. Yeah, and while you're waiting for those medical expenses to happen, you can invest those funds, increase the value of the money that you've contributed, and then on top of that, grow dividend income. It's all about making every dollar count, and an HSA at your place of employment is a great way to maximize your dollars, keep it in your own net worth and portfolio, reduce your tax liability, mm -hmm. and have another source of income. Yeah, so let us know in the comments section if you use an HSA. Also, I know we mentioned we left our employers. That's usually one of the major questions that comes up with an HSA is yeah, what do you do, do with the old funds? We are happy to show you how you can convert them into an account at Lively or somewhere else so that you can stop paying fees and grow your income that way. We cannot wait to interact and hopefully show you how to maximize this account. So again, a lot of the links to the Lively, so you can use that link to help in your rollover or transfer. Please give us a thumbs up if you've liked this video, if you've learned something, if we helped save you money. Subscribe to our channel if you enjoy watching Bert and I, you know, to teach you a few things, you know, here yeah. and there. This is Bert Laney from the Dividend Diplomats, over and out. out.